Good morning. Welcome back to the start of another weekly vlog. This weekend started out much differently than I had originally anticipated. So if you watched last week's weekly vlog, I actually closed it out on Thursday and mentioned that, oh, I don't really have any plans for tomorrow except to go grocery shopping. So I'm just not, not going to bother like documenting Friday and I'll just pick back up on Saturday. And that was the plan. In fact, I was also supposed to go grocery shopping. If you watch my goals video, you saw that I'm doing a eating plan for three weeks, the first three weeks of March. So an intense grocery shopping trip, I was going to dye my hair and I was going to kind of relax because I had a busy Saturday and Sunday planned. Well, Friday morning, Sam is about to walk out the door and I'm like putting my shoes on and he goes, Oh, I forgot to mention that concert, the Texas X's Texas Independence Day concert is tonight. We should totally go. In fact, I think I might be able to get us free tickets through the board. And I was like, what? I have plans for tonight. Like it's Friday morning, like my weekend is planned. And he was like, what are you, what do you have planned? And I was like, well, I was gonna go grocery shopping. And he was like, I can do that. And I was like, well, and I was gonna dye my hair. And he was like, you can do that another time. Like, don't you wanna go to this concert? And I was like, Yes, Sam, I do want to go to this concert. In fact, I brought up the concert when they first announced it, asking if you wanted to buy tickets, and you told me no because you don't really like country music, which is still true. He was like, I know, but now that we're here, like, I think we should just go, especially if we can get free tickets. And I was just like, I was frustrated. And I know, I know that he he, do, he does these things like out of the goodness of his heart, and he just genuinely wants me to be happy, and he knew that I would enjoy the concert. Um, but sometimes he forgets that I also love structure and planning. And he was like, okay, no, realistically, like what, what has to happen in order for you to go? Like I can do the grocery shopping. And I was like, are you sure? This isn't like our normal easy peasy weekly grocery shopping. This is like an intense long list of food because I am cooking everything at home. And he was like, no, I, I can do it what else? And I was like, well, I'm supposed to dye my hair tonight so that I can let it dry overnight. That way, Saturday morning, I have time to work out and film one video and then go to this baby shower, come home, film the rest. And then I have plans with my friends Saturday night tonight. So finally, I was just like, fine, I will make it work. I will move my weekend schedule around. As long as you are going to the grocery store, I will move everything else around and we can go to the concert tonight. So that is what we did. It was a blast. It was Josh Abbott band, Randy Rogers band, and Pat Green, and it was phenomenal. It was so much fun. The venue was great. We got to see a lot of our other friends that went to Texas, and it was just, it was a really fun night. Um, and then I got up this morning, dyed my hair, tidied up a little bit. I filmed part of one video, but then I still have a lot to finish filming when I get back. I didn't get quite as much filming done before as I wanted to because I also had to blow dry my hair a little bit. It didn't quite finish drying. My hair takes forever to dry. All of that to say, I am working on being flexible and moving things around. I don't know if any of you can relate. It just can be really hard sometimes, even for fun things that come up because it it would mess up the rest of my weekend. Now, the good news of all of this is I don't have to go to the grocery store and the list is intense. Like it's, there's a lot of things and it's somewhat specific. And I kind of told him that he's probably gonna have to go to Trader Joe's and Whole Foods because there are things on the list that he should get at Trader Joe's because they're just much, like they're gonna be less expensive. But then there's other things he won't be able to find at Trader Joe's. <laughs> he was like, it's okay, I'll do it. And I was like, great. So when I finally review this eating plan, I feel like I'm not going to be able to comment on how much of a pain the grocery shopping was. I might have to ask Sam to give his two cents because I'm, I, I'm not doing it. I'll do it for weeks two and three, but there are so many things that you buy week one and then you use weeks two and three like oils and flowers and spices and stuff that I'm not going to have to buy. <laughs> so now I have a few minutes before I need to head to the baby shower. And so I'm just going to make sure that everything is prepped and ready to go. That way when I walk in the door, I can jump straight into filming. I'm going to film four videos four videos between the time I get home from the shower until I'm meeting up with my friends to go to the Disney DJ night. Doll, I am so proud of myself right now. I am doing so well on time. So I got home 30 minutes later from the baby shower than I had originally planned or thought I was gonna get home. I knew that they had the private space reserved till four, but truthfully, I didn't think we were gonna stay that long. So I thought I was gonna get home at four. It's like 15 minutes from where I live, but I didn't get home till 4.30. I still have already filmed three videos. So I have one more to go and I still have an hour and 20 minutes before I am meeting my friend. And we're, I mean, she lives down the street. So we're meeting down the street and then going to where we're going. 
but I'm super proud of myself. The baby shower was so much fun. The was, baby shower was so much fun. It was under the sea themed, and my friends Allison and Sam, who hosted it for our friend Kara, did such a wonderful job. It was so well decorated and cute. They're not finding out the gender of the baby, so that's why they kept it this cute neutral theme. It's also the theme for the nursery. They're doing an under the sea theme. And one of the things I really loved was the guest book. Now, I mean, traditionally, you probably don't normally do a guest book at a baby shower. I mean, maybe you do. I haven't been to all that many baby showers, at least not since I was very little and going to like my siblings baby showers. But what they did was they picked out an under the sea themed book, like a, a children's book, and then they had everybody sign it. And I just think that's so cute because like I did include a card with my gift and they, you know, they'll probably keep the cards for a little bit, but not forever. But this book, they'll probably keep for a while. So I think that that's really cool. And I just had a really great time. It was fun chatting with everybody. Um, I only had coffee. I had no mimosa so that I could come home and film. And now I'm going to tidy up quickly from the one I just finished and get the last one done. Super, super excited about my day today. All right, I'm ready. I have had a whirlwind of a day and I'm still energized and like excited about tonight. I don't know if it's just because I'm getting to spend time with some friends that I haven't really hung out with much lately as well as I just love Disney DJ night. It's the best. So I'm excited to head out. We're actually, oh, it's so funny. We decided to meet at a restaurant bar instead of just like a normal bar so that they're guaranteed to have coffee in case any of us felt like we needed a pick me up because the one negative to this Disney night is that it starts at 11. It is so much fun and if you love Disney music and they play stuff from like all of Disney like the Disney Channel original movies they play like show theme songs like they played the Kim Possible theme song last time like it is just a blast but it starts at 11 and like that's so late <laughs> that is way past my bedtime. Uh, last night at the concert I was like yawning like crazy at like nine and I was like it's pretty much my bedtime. So we decided to meet at a bar so for those who would like a drink first can have a drink and those who would like a cup of coffee or tea first can do that. Um, but I'm about to head out and enjoy the evening. Hello, happy Wednesday. I have quite a few things to update you on so hopefully I remember all of them. Okay, the first one that's planner related. I don't like the Erin Condren productivity washi in my daily petite planner. I don't like that I have to make sure that I have a permanent pen so that I can write on the washi. The pen that I like to use in my daily petite planner does not work on the washi and it's just not worth it. Like I would rather draw my own check boxes. I actually have been meaning to try an idea that I saw uh, I want to say it was Laura Planted on Instagram. I can't remember exactly who it was who made her own check boxes with the mild liners, the gray mild liner, just like doing a little swish of the highlighter and making it a little gray box. So I might try that. I mean, I like the ones that I draw. It's just more of like a convenience factor that I thought the washi was going to add. But the fact that it makes me use a different pen, like, defeats the purpose. Second thing, I am just now leaving Weight Watchers and I officially have lost 10 pounds now since starting Weight Watchers uh, mid-January, whatever the week was I got back from being out of town, uh, which is great. I'm very, very proud of that. Um, it's been up and down. I mean, there have been some good weeks, some bad weeks. This week happened to be a great week. It probably helps that I haven't really had alcohol in almost two weeks since my friend Brooke was here. I can't really say that it's this new um, eating plan that I'm on. If you watch my goals video from last week, I'm doing something called the 21 Day Sugar Detox. Um, it's a book that, well, I started following the company on Instagram first, followed them for a while, and then decided that I was interested in trying it, ordered the book on Amazon. I talked about it more in the goals video, um, but it's only been three days, so I definitely don't think it's that. Um, anyways, so I'm really excited. I'm proud of it. You get little charms when you hit little milestones. They give you a little like keychain and then it has little charms. I have one that said five pounds and then now I have a 10 pound one. I don't know how often they give those or what other milestones there are besides five, so far five and 10. But I'm always down for like a gamification of anything. Um, next update, you may have seen this on Instagram, but starting tomorrow, my department has asked that we start working from home to help with the spread of the coronavirus. I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> like, I like working from home. I talked about that in a vlog before. I like working in my pajamas. I like not having to commute and get ready. It saves me probably 90 minutes a day to not have to do those things. That's a lot of time back in my day. And I understand that not having a bunch of us on the subway commuting and then coming into work is safer for everybody. 
switching hands. Uh, for the most part, we can do our jobs from home. Like, it's not that big of a deal. Um, but it's not company-wide yet either. Company-wide, they've had some other policies put into place. Can't have meetings of more than 20 people. Um, no external meetings unless absolutely necessary. Um, no international company travel. If you do travel internationally personally, you have to stay at home for two weeks after you get back. Uh, I think that's it, that's company-wide right now, but they're anticipating the working from home is gonna be company-wide soon. So our department was like, let's just get ahead of it and let's have everybody start working from home now. That way we can get all the kinks out and get used to it. So starting tomorrow, we are working from home. And then the last thing I wanted to catch up with you on was something we talked about last week and that is having notifications on your phone. And I really appreciate all of your comments. I have learned a lot, had a lot of great suggestions from you. And I, it's only been a couple of days, but I do think that what I am trying to do or what I've done has made a difference. So the first thing I did was put anything that would get a notification into one folder. Well, uh, with the exception of text messages, I kept those out on the bottom, but everything else that I was giving, turning notifications back on for, which is basically any app that I mindlessly open, got put into a folder. That way I can easily see when I open my phone, if any of those apps have a notification, like that folder has a notification. Um, I do think that by doing this, when I, I mindlessly pick up my phone and open my phone, that it's just have it it's not a good one, but it's just something that I do. I pick up my phone. If I see that there are no red dots, none of those things have a notification, I have found myself putting my phone back down and not going in and opening those apps. And that has been really awesome. I mean, it hasn't stopped me from picking up my phone, but that means if there are no notifications to check when I do pick up my phone, it's a three second thing instead of potentially a lot longer minutes thing because I would mindlessly go to my email, I would mindlessly go to Instagram, and then I would continue to scroll even if there were no notifications. It also though was pretty selective about what notifications got turned on for those things. So for example, like on Instagram, I only did it for direct messages, not for comments or likes. And then for Facebook, I did it for things that mention me, not just for like random groups. Then for emails, I did it for all of them, which I wish there was an option to not have it that way. I wish I could have email notifications turned on just for certain email addresses. Maybe I can, maybe I need to look into that, but, um, I wish I could do that. And then for YouTube, I did just comments, but I'm kind of, that's the one I'm kind of debating turning off because those I like to respond to with like a little bit more thought. Like if I don't have Instagram comments turned on, why do I have YouTube comments turned on? So I might turn those off, um, turn those notifications off, but the other ones, I think it has made a world of difference that I'm only opening an app when there is something that I want to respond to. Now, a lot of you did recommend like having a rule where I only open those apps, or I only open up the notifications when I have a certain number, five, double digits, whatever it is. That can be a Sunday goal. I think for now, we are already making progress, so I'm just gonna keep that up, but someday I might try and implement that rule for myself. The last thing I did though that has helped with this sort of mindless opening of apps is I moved them around. So I think if you ever get to a place where you are just mindlessly opening up apps and you like you open your phone, for me this big, the big one with this was email. I was finding myself just like opening that like out, I still do it even though there's a new app there in that spot. The other ones that kind of have relearned their new locations almost, like I might have to do this relatively frequently as soon as I just get muscle memory for the location of those apps, I'm gonna have to move them around. But the email has made a huge difference. What I put there instead is my calendar. So it's my Google Cal app. So if I go like mindlessly muscle memory to open up where mail used to be, it's now like my Google Cal pops up. And I'm like, oh, those are the things I'm supposed to be doing right now instead of trying to check my email. So anyways, that might be a tip for you as well. If you don't wanna mess with your notifications, but you know that you have muscle memory for certain apps, just like put them in a different spot on your phone and see if that helps. All right, now I am headed to Starbucks. That's the only thing I could find near the bar that I can sit and edit at for a little bit. And then I am meeting Sam and some of our friends for trivia. So I'm really excited. It's funny, if you watch a plan with me, I was like kind of unsure about trivia on a weeknight, um, but now I'm working from home tomorrow. Although I will tell you, I think I'm still planning to do my morning workouts 
to keep up the routine. Um, even though I'm working from home. I might try and lean a little bit more towards the 7 a.m. classes now that I don't have to shower and get ready because I can go to a 7 a.m. come home. Like, well, like I have to shower. I need a shower. But I don't have to get ready for work or commute. I can just come home, shower, eat breakfast, and then immediately start working. So um, I might be able to sleep in a little bit. But I don't want to lose my morning routine or my like early wake up abilities for the moment that they say, just kidding. It's time to come back to work. Hello, happy Thursday. I am spending my lunch hour checking in with you. This is awesome. I've mentioned this before, but I do love working from home. I love not having to get ready and being able to work in my pajamas. Not pajamas, let me clarify. My coworker and I talked about this yesterday. I did come home from the gym, shower, and put on clean, comfy clothes. But being able to hang out in comfy clothes all day is the best and not having to commute is awesome i mean i save so much time not having to commute or not having to get ready it's the best anyways my day so far is going very well i am also participating in the ally edwards day in the life project today i'm just documenting everything taking some pictures making some notes and then over the weekend i will actually work on the actual like crafty memory keeping part of it. Let me know if you guys are liking the memory keeping being a part of the weekly vlog. When I'm working on the memory keeping, I don't necessarily want to pull out the camera and the lights and make it all like a super official video. So I like having it be a part of the weekly vlog, but let me know how you feel about that in the comments. I completely respect if you're like, like in memory keeping is not my thing and I kind of wish it wasn't part of the vlog. Totally fine. I would just love your feedback. But I do have a couple other things to share with you. The first one is, let's talk about yesterday. So, last time we chatted, I was on my way to Starbucks to edit. I had about an hour and a half before I had to meet everybody at Trivia. And I picked the Starbucks closest to the Trivia place. I've mentioned this before, but I think a really good sort of productivity, time-saving hack, especially if you're relying on public transportation. But if I'm going to meet somebody, say for dinner or whatever, and I have time to kill between work and said event, instead of sitting in my office and working and then hopefully leaving with enough time to get to where I need to be on time, I will just go ahead and leave the office, commute, take as long as it takes to commute, and then find a coffee shop nearby to where I'm supposed to be and work there. I did mention this is not necessarily the most cost-effective recommendation because I'm the kind of person that feels obligated to buy something when I go into anywhere but a small tea at starbucks is like two dollars so anyways i picked the starbucks near the bar and i get there and there's a big sign on the door that says close due to electrical issues and then it lists where the closest one is and i was like i know where the closest one is it's back over by the subway like i walked past it to come to this one but fine I will backtrack and go to the other Starbucks. So as I'm walking to the other Starbucks, I'm like, well, I'm gonna order on mobile. I tried to do it at the first Starbucks, but they didn't have mobile. That should have been a hint to me that they weren't gonna be open. Um, I thought maybe they just do, didn't do mobile ordering. So as I'm walking to the second Starbucks, I pull out my app and I place my order, my mobile order. And, and as after I placed it, I was like, well, I really hope that there's a table because like it would suck to have paid for this tea and then there not be a table, but it was too late. I already clicked submit. So I get to the Starbucks. I walk in tons of tables. Great. Cool. I go pick up my tea. I find a table, put my stuff down, take my computer out. Oh, my computer is like basically dead. All right. Pull out my cable. Couldn't find an outlet near the table I was at. And I was like, oh, okay, well, there's a lot of other open tables. Like I'll go find one with an outlet. There, there was, there was not one with an outlet huge Starbucks. This is the Starbucks at Union Square that I'm talking about. For those of you familiar with New York, huge Starbucks, no outlets. You could see where the outlets used to be also. Like they had like a plate covering them, a plastic covering. So they must have had issues with people coming in there and just using their outlets and charging and not actually buying anything and covered them all up. So that sucked because I actually wanted to buy something and get work done and I couldn't. So I'm sitting there at a table with my dead laptop and my tea that I just bought that's burning hot, trying to figure out what my next move is. I'm like, I have at that point, probably closer to like an hour and 15 minutes. What do I do? And for a split second, I contemplated blowing off trivia and just coming home. I was like, I need to finish editing this video. I wasn't finished editing the goals video that went up on Friday, by the way, because that video just takes forever to edit. I probably should allocate more time each month for that particular video. And I was like, no, I told them I was going to trivia. I'm not going to bail on trivia. And I've mentioned before, I am an extrovert when it's people that I know. And I love trivia. So I was like, all right, 
like, is it that big of a deal if you don't edit this video? Can you finish it tomorrow? And luckily, because I didn't have to commute today, I had time this morning to finish it. So the video is done and that was great. It's exported and uploaded. I love working from home. Um, and so then I was like, all right, what am I going to do with this hour and 15 minutes? Luckily, I had my book club books with me, both the book and the participants guide. Luckily, I had my book club stuff with me. I had both my book and the participants guide. I don't remember why I decided to throw it in my backpack, but I'm so glad that I did because I was behind. They had started it last week and I was still trying to play catch up. So it was just perfect. I pulled out my book club stuff. I read the books. I answered the questions in the participants guide. And then I went to Facebook and answered the questions there as if I'd been doing it every day like I was supposed to. And it was just the perfect use of that hour and a half. And I just have to say that I feel like that was a mental breakthrough. I feel like in the past, when things don't go as planned, I lose it. And I'm like, well, this isn't gonna work and life is just gonna fall apart. Um, but it didn't. And I made it, I made it happen, I made it work, and it's fine. Now, I will say trivia in general went way later than I thought it was. It started at eight and I was like, uh, oh, it's two-ish hours. We're about 20 minutes from home, like I could be asleep by eleven. Yeah, no. Trivia didn't end until like 1045, 1050. And then by the time we got home, it was like almost 1130. And I pushed through and didn't cancel my spin class. So I still got up this morning. I'm a little tired, needless to say. But uh, it's nice. I'm working from home. I have a cup of coffee and it's all fine. I don't drink coffee every single day. I don't, I don't know if I've mentioned this before. I save coffee for days like this when I know I really need the caffeine. So I'm not, like I don't need the caffeine every single day. I don't get headaches. Like I... I, I did when I first quit coffee because I used to have coffee every day and then I stopped having coffee every day. I did get headaches for a while and now I only drink coffee when I have a super early flight where I didn't sleep a whole lot last night and I know I need to focus. Anyways, this is turning into a longer chat than I thought, but I still have two things to tell you. One is a podcast recommendation. So this is one of those podcasts that I discovered it and it had like uh, over a hundred episodes and I thought that I needed to go back and listen to all of them to get all the content from this person and blah, 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 blah. And I finally decided a couple weeks ago that like, no, I, I do like this person and I like following their content. Um, and I like the new episodes that come out, but I don't feel like I need to go back and listen to all of them. So it's called the perfectionism project, although she's Australian. So she says the perfectionism project. I love it. I love her accent. Um, but it's really awesome. It's talking about obviously perfectionism and overcoming perfectionism and how you can, you know, change your mindset. Specifically, I want to recommend her most recent episode that I listened to. It's called how to stick to your plan when you don't feel like it. Doesn't that sound like it was made for us? How to stick to your plans when you don't feel like it. And one of the biggest break breakthroughs that I got, I'll tell you like the two things I took away like the most from it, but I, I highly recommend going to listen to the whole thing because she gives like, I think it's seven tips on sticking to plans when you don't feel like it. The biggest thing I took away is that most of the time you don't feel like it. You like, you don't feel like doing the thing most of the time. Now I do hope that there are some things in your calendar that are just for fun that you do look forward to. But most of the time, this is true for me, even when I'm excited about my goals, when I get to that moment and it's like the next thing on my calendar, I don't feel like doing it. Like, and it's not because I don't necessarily enjoy the thing or because I know that it is going to get me closer to my goals, but it's like, it's work. If you're working for something, it's, it's work, it's effort. And I don't feel like putting in effort. Like I feel like laying on the couch and watching Netflix. But what you find, and this is true for me, I don't know if it's true for you, once you start doing the thing, then all of a sudden you feel like doing it. Once you're like five minutes in and the endorphins kick in, or I don't know if it's chemical or just, I don't know, but it does happen where I start something that I didn't feel like doing, and once I started it, I'm like, oh, okay, this is good. I feel like doing this now, and I, I see it through to the end. So just prepare, to mentally prepare for that moment that you're not gonna feel like doing it when it comes up on your calendar, but to stick to it. The other big thing that I took away was be flexible. It's okay to reschedule. It's okay to change things in your calendar. It's okay to shift things around when there is new information available that is resulting in the need to change things around. Only change it around when there's new information brought in. She does a much better job of explaining that, but it, that one also was like, to me because I move things around a lot and sometimes I feel like I have a good reason for them and sometimes I feel like I justify it but sometimes I probably don't and I just do it because I didn't feel like doing that one thing when I probably should have just done that one thing. This is how we're a month in and my dresser's still not organized or decluttered or whatever. 
The last thing I have to tell you is something I got in the mail that I'm not going to show you for obvious reasons, and that is new bras. But I wanted to recommend the company that I buy bras from, and that is Soma. It's not a new thing at all, um, and if you probably walked by one of their stores, they have a handful of stores. Um, I don't know if it's owned by any major other companies, but it is, it's not cheap. I'm not trying to, this is not inexpensive bras. I mean, they are like the same price as like Victoria's Secret, but they are so high quality and they fit so well. That's no secret. I have a chest. Victoria's Secret bras, yes, they come in my size, but like they never fit properly. I never felt comfortable in the bras that I got from there. I went to this store in person in Chicago Christmas of last year. So like a year and a couple months ago. And at that point I was like, I need new bras. I, my, the bras that I have are just falling apart. I, I typically would get bras from like Kohl's or Target where my like go-to sort of, and I would try to spend like 20 to 30 bucks a bra. Like 30 was like my max per bra. And so at this point I was like, you know, I would be willing to spend more than that on a bra that's going to last and that's going to fit me perfectly. So my stepmom actually is the one that recommended it, which is funny because she actually doesn't have much of a chest. She's, she's uh, like very petite, but she was like, this is the best place to get bras. I highly recommend it. So I went with my mom and I did like, you know, an original consultation where she basically pulled like every bra that they had in like multiple sizes that were close to mine. And I figured out exactly which style was my favorite and which size worked for me. And I bought it in two colors. That was a year and a couple months ago. And I mentioned for Christmas that I kind of wanted a couple more. Not that anything is wrong with those two because there's not. They are still in great condition. Um, and I don't really, I don't do anything super special when I wash them. I mean, I don't dry them, but I don't wash them on gentle. Truthfully, I throw them in with the rest of my clothes and then I hang them to dry. And, but, and they're, and they're still in great condition. I just wanted more. And specifically I wanted one more nude colored one. Cause I had one, I bought one nude and one like colored bra that 15 months ago. So I wanted at least one more nude one. And then I kind of wanted like another one just to have like four of my favorite go-to bras. And my parents got me a gift card because they were like, we don't actually know what you want. And I was like, I could have told you exactly which style I want, exactly what size. And I've been waiting to use it until I got a coupon because that's my other tip is they always send out coupons and have sales. So I did buy full price bras, but I got, I used a coupon to decrease the total a little bit. It was like $15 off 75 or something like that. Uh, so anyways, I ordered those and they came in yesterday. Luckily, oh my God, I'm so glad they came in yesterday. I got them delivered to the office. So anyways, again, it is called Soma. If you have a store near you, I would go to the store and like try things on. If you don't, they have a return policy. You can order online and exchange or return. But the bra that I like is called the Vanishing Back Full Coverage Bra. It's the best. It is my absolute favorite. And yes, it is expensive, but it is so worth it. Hi. So, um... I had a call this afternoon after we chatted where my boss basically explained that today was just a test day and this whole like working from home indefinitely was not actually a real thing. We just needed to test that our whole team was able to work from home successfully and that we are welcome to come back into the office as long as we feel comfortable doing so until the company says that it is a company wide thing. I don't, I don't know. I am still very confused. All I know is that I went from thinking I was working from home tomorrow and I literally already decided that I was going to do laundry tomorrow during lunch. And then he says this and I was like, well, now I'm going to have to come into the office. And he was like, you don't have to, but I'm coming into the office. And it's like, okay, so your boss says that, like you're going into the office. Um, but on the bright side, there's supposed to be a new Air Contra product delivered tomorrow. Sometimes I get mine late because Sam will overnight them from California and New York just like, can't, they just can't. Or it gets to my office at like 4 p.m. and they don't get it to me. Uh, sometimes it does though, so we'll see. Fingers crossed that it gets to my desk tomorrow, which would make having to go into the office totally worth it. Anyways, the best part about working from home is I am an hour ahead of schedule tonight, which I mean, I expected given I didn't have to commute home, but like it totally played out. I went and got my nails done and then I came home and then I cooked. Tonight was a heavy cooking night. Um, because I cooked some sweet potatoes in advance of future meals. That is one of the biggest tips I've taken away from this like meal plan is like things that take forever to cook like a sweet potato, don't cook it the night that you want to eat it. So like while I was cooking tonight, the sweet potatoes just basically sat in the oven for like a real long time. I even kept moving them from like the top rack to the middle rack, depending on what else I was cooking in the oven. And now they're done and ready for when I do need them. Um, and then I cooked breakfast 
for the next couple days. They're just egg cups with some sausage and vegetables. And then, um, and then I made dinner for tonight. And then I ate dinner. Now I'm exhausted. Oh, I'm like, what do I do with this extra hour? I could get a jump start on editing the vlog because I haven't done any of that this week. And normally I try to like do a little bit in advance. I could take a bath, which is really tempting. I could just get in bed and watch SVU. Also very tempting. Sam's not going to be home until later tonight. Well, I say later. He told me he was going to be home at 930. However, Sam's ability to estimate the time he's going to be home is poor. And so I joke with my friend. It's called Sam time. So he says 930 and really it's probably closer to 10. But I literally, it's 8 p.m. <laughs> and I just sent him a text that said, um, well, I just finished eating dinner and I'm very tired. So don't be surprised if I'm asleep when you get home. Like, I could very well be asleep by 9.30 and be totally, totally okay with it. The first thing I have to do, though, is clean up the kitchen because it's a disaster. By the time I was done cooking all the things and then cooking tonight's dinner, I was starving. Normally, I'll try to clean up as I go, which I did a little bit. And then I will also try to clean up, like, something before I go sit and eat. And I just did not. I need to get my butt off of this couch and go clean the kitchen. Then I think I am going to take a bath. I do want to get in bed and just watch Netflix, but like, I'm not what like there's nothing I'm watching right now. There's no new episodes of anything. There's no new show I'm watching, um, which is good. I don't actually want a new show because then I binge it. I don't want a new show. Um, I'm watching reruns of SVU again and again. And so I don't, I don't need to get in bed and watch that. So I'm going to get in the bath with a book, I think. And that will basically put me to sleep by the when I get out. Like I need to make sure I brush my teeth before I get in the bath because once I'm in the bath at night, I am exhausted. Like when I get out, I'm like, okay, I'm ready to go to sleep now, and it takes me like five minutes to fall asleep. A little longer than a few minutes later. Y'all, it is now 8:35, and I haven't moved from the couch. Um, so I guess I decided to take my 30 minutes of bath time here on the couch. I started watching a YouTube video and I was gonna like get up and let it play while I clean the kitchen and I just did not. Um, and then I started messaging a friend and I just didn't get up off the couch. So now I need to actually get off the couch and clean up the kitchen. Ugh, yuck. And normally Sam helps with cleaning up the kitchen, especially when I'm the one that cooks, but he's not here. He will do the dishes if I leave them in the sink, but I'm trying this new thing where I don't necessarily just let the, I, I, if they need to be washed, like washed with a sponge and soap, I will leave them in the sink for Sam. If they just need to be rinsed and then put in the dishwasher, I'm not going to pile them up in the sink. I'm going to put them in the dishwasher. It just, it's a waste of time for everybody involved. So here we go. Hello. Happy Friday. Uh, went back into the office today. It was fine. Still rumors that we're going to do something different now and we're going to alternate people working from home. Nothing confirmed yet. So I have nothing to share that I'm assuming will be a part of next week's weekly vlog. The outcome of my company's coronavirus action plan. I have two questions for you actually. For those of you that watch the monthly goals video, the last one went up on Friday today, but you, you know, this video is going up after that, um, for February slash March. And I have two questions related to those videos. My first question is related to the calendar portion of the video. So the part where I go through and I show how my goals are mapped out in the calendar, is that helpful? Part A. Part B, do you like it as part of the goals videos or does it make more sense for it to be part of the monthly planning videos? If the answer to that is the monthly planning videos, I probably will have to switch the order of those videos because this month I uploaded the monthly planning one before the goals video, so I would have to switch them around. I'm open to anything. It does make the goals video a little bit longer. I don't know if that matters to you. Let me know in the comments your thoughts on that section or if you just want me to take it out and do it on my own. Question two is something kind of new for this year, and that is the quarterly goals. If you watched way back in December, I talked about how I'm breaking my annual goals down into quarterly goals, and then that then translates to the monthly videos. But obviously there's a quarterly refresh coming up where I need to assess how I did on my quarter one goals and what I'm setting for quarter two. 
I had originally planned to make that its own separate video. So very similar to the monthly ones where I reflect on the prior quarter and then talk about the upcoming quarter. Somebody in the comments today recommended that I do it as part of the monthly video just for April. And I could totally do that, although that video will be crazy long if I do it that way. If I reflect on quarter one, talk about quarter two, reflect on March and share April goals, it's gonna be a super long video. But if that is what you would prefer, I'm totally fine with that. So let me know in the comments. Would you prefer that the quarterly goals video is its own separate video or lumped in with the April's goal video? That is all, those are my questions. So let me know your thoughts and thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna go ahead and close out this week's a weekly vlog here and go enjoy the rest of my Friday night. So if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, please click that subscribe button. I upload new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Thank you so much for watching. Happy planning. Sam, 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 Sam. I don't know if any of you else, any of else of you. I also was, but then I was like, well, where are you? Where are you? Company that I buy bras from. Bras from? Go through the calendar in the, pla in the plower sheet.